Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain how to create this column chart that displays the percentage change. So this is the second part in this series of videos and the second iteration for this chart. If you saw the previous video I explained how to create this chart here that also displays the percentage change between the columns here. But we had some great feedback on the YouTube channel from both Connor and Wayne about wanting to see some color and some very variation in these uh, error bars here and also uh, making this a little more dynamic so the data labels automatically move when the source data changes. So based on that feedback, and I love the feedback, great feedback, thank you so much, uh, I've come up with this chart here which does show these uh, colored bars with colored data labels for the positive and negative changes and it's also more dynamic and flexible. And what I mean by that is we can now slice this data, so I've added a slicer here when we click the, one of the slicers, of course the underlying source data changes there to show the data for the south region. And these labels and error bars also change as well. So in this video, I'm going to explain some of the changes I made to this to make this work. If you want to learn how to create this step by step, go check out the last video. I walk through it all step by step. But in this video, I'll just show some of these changes here. So first of all, the source data for the chart is over here on this sheet. And it's expanded a little if you've seen the last video. Uh, really, we've just added some additional column here, columns here for the invisible bars that we're displaying in the chart. So if we go back over to the chart, I'll uh, show those as well. Uh, so now we have these invisible visible bars. If we select on the chart here, go to the format tab on the ribbon, and in the drop down here we can choose the invisible bar series. That'll show the first invisible bar here. We now have three invisible bars, and by invisible bars I just mean that these do not have any fill color to these bars or these columns, and they're also equal to the next year's revenue or the next year's amount. So we first have this one here, which is just adding some space or a little bit of gap width uh, for our error bars. And then we have a second invisible bar for the positive changes. So that's this one here. We could see an outline of it here and an outline of it here. And then that error bar extends below it. So it starts at the top of that bar and then extends down. It's actually a negative error bar, even though it's a positive change. And then we have a third error bar or invisible bar uh, that's used for the negative change. And in this case, the error bars are just sitting on top of this visible invisible bar uh, for the negative change. And then I've also adjusted the overlap on these. So if we right click uh, format data series, I've adjusted the series overlap to 50% and the gap width to 15% to get these bars to overlap. And so that way we have a little bit of gap between uh, the bar itself, the bar with the color that's actually showing the amount, and then either the positive or the negative change that's displayed between those amount bars. So you might need to adjust that gap width uh, depending on the width of your chart and uh, possibly the uh, width of the bars and how you want to display those as well. So what these invisible bars do is allow us to create the error bars on different series. So we have one series of bars here, these invisible bars, for the negative change and then we have the error bars on top of those. And if we look at the properties uh, for the error bars, we can see over here that we do have uh, the direction still set to both. I've changed the in style and the cap to no cap. And then of course, if we scroll down here, we're uh, specifying a value. And then uh, for the error bars now, uh, in this case for the positive error value, we don't have any. So I've just used this blank column here. There's no data in here. And then for the negative error value, we're using the negative variance amount here. So that's what the, uh, the underlying data for the error bars is. And that's what we see right here. So if we, it's a positive change, then the error bar is not going to be displayed at all. You can kind of see a little dot there where there would be uh, a negative error bar, but there's just nothing displayed there. And then the exact same thing uh, happens for the error bars with the positive change. They're again sitting on that other invisible series and we've just uh, used that formatting there to change them. And to, to apply that formatting, you can select the error bars and then over here in the task pane, you can click the fill and line option. And right here, uh, we choose a solid line and then you can change the color of the error bar. You can also change the width of it. I change it to 1.25. And then down here, we can actually add arrow types. So the beginning arrow type 
Uh, I've just chosen that regular arrow there. You can change these to any of the arrow styles that you'd like. And this is the beginning area. I'm sorry, the beginning arrow, even though uh, it's pointing downwards, it's kind of going backwards here. It's kind of reverse. Uh, so that's the begin arrow. And then the end arrow type is just uh, set to nothing here, just a straight line. And then for the data labels, these data labels are actually uh, sitting on top or on the inside end of the invisible bars themselves. So this is on the uh, invisible bar for the negative variances here. We have these data labels. And again, for this, uh, same as the last video here, we're using the value from cells option and then selecting that range. And if we go over here to our source data, we have a negative uh, variance percentage column right here that contains those values. And then the same thing uh, for the positive variances as well. Now, if you're using Excel 2010 and earlier, there is a free add-in called the XY Labeler. And I'll put a link in the description below this video uh, that you can get to do this to create the data labels. Uh, because in Excel 2010, this option here to select from range or value from cells is not available. So there's a workaround with a free add-in that you can use to uh, get this same effect here. Of course, if you're using Excel 2013 or later, then you don't have to worry about that and you could just use this option. And then the other thing I've done here is added a slicer. And so this is using a pivot table for the underlying data. So my source data is on this uh, data sheet right here, which uh, just breaks out the revenue by region. I've then created a summary pivot table right here with uh, revenue by region. And I've added a slicer, also put the region field in the filters area up here and added a slicer that will just filter the pivot table for a specific region. And then I linked my source data for my chart to the pivot table. So if we jump back over here to this sheet and we go over to the source data here in this amount column in column B, you'll see we're using the get pivot data function to return that value, that specific value for the year 2011 from the pivot table. And of course, as it's filtered for different regions, or if you have any other filters on there, it's still going to return the value that's displayed in the pivot table. And you could also just link this directly to the cell in the pivot table. You don't necessarily have to use get pivot data for this scenario, but it just does make it just a little more bulletproof there in case the source data move. I'm sorry, in case the pivot table moves. And so that's just the source data there being pulled from the pivot table. I also then just copied the slicer over here to this sheet, the same slicer. And then as we click the slicer to filter the pivot table, that's uh, applying that and filtering our underlying source data or the source data is reflecting those numbers. And then everything in the chart uh, changes. So that makes this uh, fully dynamic here and might be a great addition to any of your dashboards where you have slicers and you want to display this percentage change uh, between columns uh, in your column charts. So I hope that helps and you find this useful. Of course, when we're creating charts, we always go through many iterations and that's totally okay. We won't get it perfect the first time. As you can see here, I didn't. Of course, it's also very subjective and up to your opinion, maybe your boss's opinion and your audience's opinion. So always check with them as well, get feedback and uh, don't be afraid to make changes to your charts and try and improve them over time. So again, I hope that helps. Of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.